Welcome to First Wednesday. You made it here. Come on, say amen. You survived a Wednesday. You made it through the day. We're here together. That's good news, right? I want to welcome, and I'm saying this for a very specific reason tonight. I want to welcome all of you that are watching online. I got a message this past week from a young soldier who is in uh, Europe right now. He's in, in fact, he's in Poland, I think. And he said, listen, every night I turn on, he said, on Sundays, a group of soldiers gather around, watch the service live. He says, but at, at night, we turn on the YouTube channel. That's got the, you know, the previous Sundays recorded. And we listen once again to the entire service. He says, and this has been a lifeline to us. It's feeding our soul. So tonight, <clears throat> I welcome you. I hope you're watching tonight. I got your message. I responded to his message. But listen, there, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people tuning in tonight. And I, I walked in the room just five minutes ago. And here's what the Lord said. The Lord said, there's someone watching live tonight. And I don't know if you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching on newlifechurch.org or maybe you're on our YouTube channel right now watching live. But I just had this strong sense tonight that someone's watching and they're wrestling with some dark thoughts tonight. And that's all I got. That's all the Lord said to me. They're wrestling with dark thoughts. And maybe you stumbled on this church service. And we're here, we're, we're a bunch of people. For your, this is for your information if you're watching. We're just a bunch of redeemed people that found we were in the darkness ourselves. And the Lord rescued us and brought us into his marvelous light. Everyone in this room has the same story that you have. We were in the dark and we got brought into the light. Not, not by our own effort, not because we were good. It was because of God's grace that he found us. Can somebody remember tonight when you were in the darkness and the Lord brought you into the light? Can you just say amen to the person watching online? So that's, this is my story and it's going to be your story tonight. And I was wondering all day long, why did the Lord want me to pray through Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. And now I know why. So I wanna put this up in New Life Church. I want you to pray for the people around you. I think there's people in the room tonight that you may have walked in wrestling with dark thoughts, wrestling with anxiety, worry, fear, maybe some doubts have crept into your soul. I'm gonna pray a prayer that was prayed over the church. And I love praying this because this is Paul praying for the church in Ephesus. And so I'm gonna pray back a prayer that was already been prayed. And I wanna pray it over the person watching online that the Lord just quickened me about. I'm gonna pray it over everyone in the room that's wrestling tonight. But I want you to pray with me tonight. Join in with me tonight. And let's pray this prophetically over the people that need to hear this tonight. This is such good news what I'm about to pray. And it says in verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, now I wanna stop here for a moment and point something out to you tonight. God has more than enough for you. God's not limited in his supply of grace for you. God, God's not lacking anything for you. Out of his glorious riches, he has more than enough for you and everyone else around you. Out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Let's leave that up and let's pray that over. Father in heaven, you have more than enough. And I pray tonight that you would strengthen our inner being by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. And so tonight, I pray strength over the room. I pray strength over those watching online. And not strength that one man gives to another, I pray that it be strength that only comes from the throne room of heaven tonight. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may you strengthen the inner man. And he's talking about your thoughts. He's talking about your emotions. He's talking about what's going on inside of you. Your inner being, I pray tonight, would be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right, put up verse 17. So that... Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I want you to stop. In fact, tonight, 
I want you just to welcome Christ back into your life. Welcome Jesus. Was well, Pastor Brady, I, I, I've already, already have salvation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about welcoming Jesus. Falling back in love with Jesus tonight. Christ may dwell in your hearts. Lord, I pray tonight that you'd give us a fresh love, a, a fresh closeness with Jesus. Not the church, not church things, not songs. I pray tonight that our first and foremost love, the most, the most passionate love that we have tonight would be for the person of Jesus. And I pray it would be rooted in us, dwelling in us. And then look at the last part of this. And I pray, go back to verse 17, go back to verse 17. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, verse 18, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp tonight how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Verse 19, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. And here's my final prayer for you tonight, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So would you just lift your hands today? Would you receive tonight the fullness of God? Father, we all came into this room tonight filled with something. But I pray tonight you would empty out of us the contamination of the world. And I pray you would fill us tonight with something beautiful and holy. I pray you would come tonight and empty out of us fear and worry and doubt and anxiety, aggravation and anger. And I pray tonight you would fill us tonight with the fullness of all that God is mercy and grace and the peace of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the kingdom of heaven would settle over this place tonight. That your will would be done in this room. That your will would be done in every person watching online, on earth, as it is in heaven. So tonight, let's ask for the fullness of God. All that God wants to do among us tonight. Let's lift our hands. Let's keep worshiping tonight. Calling on the name of the Lord.
season where we're in process, how we still come with the yes, I will. Yes, I will worship. Yes, I will exalt the name of Jesus who's working in the waiting. He's working in the waiting. I choose to praise. I choose to praise. Oh, oh I choose to praise.
way to bring down a power to bring down a principality a stronghold is to lift high the name of our Jesus of our God so much temptation out there and we get to come here and lift up the name of God we get to come here and exalt his name it's different it doesn't happen so let's reach down Let's reach deep. Let's bring down every lie of the enemy. Let's tear down every stronghold by lifting high the name of God. Hosanna, it's a cry. It says, Jesus, save us. In
where Jesus is exalted, the Spirit is poured out. So Peter says that at Pentecost, Acts chapter two. He says, exalted to the right hand of the Father, he has poured out what you now see and hear. And folks, tonight we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is being exalted and the Spirit is being poured out. And I have learned that there are different ways of engaging with the presence of the Spirit. One of the ways that we engage with the presence of the Spirit is just waiting. And we open our hands and we open our hearts, we lay our lives before the Lord and we just trust that the Spirit of God is gonna begin to move. And if you spend any length of time in the church and you know the presence of the Spirit, you know the sweetness of the Spirit when it begins to fall like that and all of a sudden you sense your spirit opening up and your heart becomes soft again and you don't wanna move from that space and I love that, there's such tenderness about that. But there's another way of engaging the presence of the Spirit and that way I think is found in Ezekiel chapter 37, one of the most profound passages in all of scripture. Ezekiel is looking out over the dashed hopes and dreams and expectations of God's people and he envisions all of that as this valley of dry bones and he's standing there in the presence of God. And God says to him, Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones here, these bones that represent the whole cut off hope of the house of Israel, can these bones live? Ezekiel turns around and he says to the Lord, look, I don't know, only you know. This is like beyond human possibility. And the Lord says to him, Ezekiel, this is what I want you to do. I want you to speak to the bones. And I want you to say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel does that, he's obedient to God. And he starts speaking to the bones and the bones begin to come together, joint to joint, ligament to ligament, sinew to sinew. And all of a sudden they rise up and stand before him. But the scripture says, but they had no breath in them. They were like these empty structures. And the Lord says to him, I got one more thing that I need you to do, Ezekiel. I want you to prophesy to the breath and speak now to the breath and call it to come from the four winds of the heavens and to enter these bodies so that they may come to life. The work is not done until we begin to speak to the breath, until we begin to prophesy the spirit like into things, guys. And so there are times that we go, come Holy Spirit. And there are other times that we speak the Spirit into the places that have been cut off and are hopeless and are lost. Are you with me tonight? And all of us here in this room tonight, we are holding things in our hands and in our hearts that feel dead to us. Marriages that it feels like they have run out of steam. Relationships with our kids where it feels like we have done everything that we can possibly do and it's not turning around friends that we've had, that the relationship has become conflicted and we don't know what to do. Maybe you're like the woman in the Gospels and you've gone to the doctor, something's going on in your body and you've exhausted your resource at the hands of the doctor and they can't do anything for you. I don't know what it is, but we're all holding something instead. It might be, dear God, it might be your own faith tonight. That what you're holding is like this empty carcass of your faith and you have done everything that you know to do to make the faith come back to life. Tonight, guys, is a night to begin to speak the Spirit into the dead places. And so I don't know what your thing is tonight, but tonight I'm asking you to have some faith in your heart and to begin to speak into those places. And so hold them up before the Lord now, would you? Jesus, here it is. All of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our expectations, the things that we hold dear, the things that we love, the things that we've put confidence in, all the things that you put in our hearts to do, I, we're speaking to all those things tonight. So Lord Jesus, we're speaking to marriages and we're saying, may breath enter those marriages and may they come to life. Do it, Lord Jesus. In the place where it feels like we've run out of steam and we don't know what to do and the whole thing is over, I'm praying for a revival in homes tonight. We're praying over the relationships between parents and their children, where it feels like it's cut off and it's hopeless and we don't know what to do. We're speaking the breath into those places. And we're saying, bring our children home, and restore the relationships and bring peace back to our homes and all the places where the breach has fallen between brothers and sisters. We're speaking to that breach right now. We're saying, hear the word of the Lord. The breath of God is coming to you. People of God, won't you begin to speak it out? We're speaking to bodies right now that won't function right. We're saying bodies hear the word of the Lord, spirit of God, breath of God come. And we have the confidence before you tonight also to speak to this city and to this nation and to this world. We're saying dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, the breath is coming to you. So come Holy Spirit, we pray. 
Come Holy Spirit, we pray. But we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you, so we're speaking your life into the places that are dead. Come Holy Spirit. People of God, keep calling out tonight.
was going into battle, I'd want all of you with me. <laughs> we're doing this tonight, and we are in battle tonight. We're fighting for marriages, right? Fighting for families. Fighting for the Lord to do what only He can do. It's a spirit of intercession on this night. I love it. To all those prayer meetings we've been doing, I think. We're spilling over. All right, one more.
Every time we worship together, we are reminding ourselves that we serve the God who raises the dead. We serve the God who raises the dead. This is the Easter season. And we remind ourselves of that. No matter how dark it gets, there's a light that will overcome. No matter how bad it gets, there's a God who gets the last word. Amen? Tonight I want to close with that final verse from Ephesians 3. Pastor Brady opened with Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I want to read 20 to 21. It says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Listen, we've asked for a lot tonight. We've prayed for a lot tonight, but it doesn't end when we walk out these doors. There is a God who is able to do immeasurably more. Maybe you're here and you're thinking, well, that was a great 60 minutes, but now back to my reality. Your reality is not just your situation. Your reality is a God who is able to do more, immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. And then he says, according to his power, it's the back of verse 20, according to his power that is at work within us. It's not a power that is distant. It's not a power that is inaccessible. It's not a power that has to be coaxed down from on high. It's a power that is within us. Put your hand over your heart tonight. Say, power of God. Fill me with strength tonight. Fill me with strength tonight. Power of God. Power of God. Work in my life tonight. Work in my life tonight. And then verse 21, it says, To him be the glory in the church. What I love about that little phrase, in the church. We keep praying, God, be glorified. And he says, I, I, I'm going to be, but I'm going to do it in and through you. So I'm gonna pray and send you out tonight because the way that God will be glorified in Colorado Springs is through the church. It's through the way you love your neighbors. It's through the way you go to work. It's through the way that you take care of one another. That's how God is glorified. So Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, the only perfect one, throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. So Jesus, send us out in your name tonight. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us on mission with you. Help us to take care of those that are weak. Help us to listen, to learn. Help us to give of ourselves. And God, as we go through every moment of our day, may you be glorified in the church, in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. Let the whole church say, Amen. 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 God bless you.